Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. Today we're going to bring you a journey that we're on of canning salsa. Now, what we did yesterday, we did a canning of salsa yesterday and we're going to show you that part of the video also. We followed, we have different ball books here. Now this ball book here, this is a 1991 ball book. This is, the, this is the recipe we used yesterday. We made the salsa out of it way too vinegary. We can't handle the vinegar in it. So we've got one batch of salsa that we're going to have to use for something that can have some vinegar in it and, and not be a problem. Now we've got the 1999 version uh, ball blue book and we've got the 2010 version ball book. Now the 91 that we made the recipe out of only had one salsa recipe in it that we followed. It's all the salsa recipes is in the whole book. These other books have multiple salsa recipes in it. So what we've done is we've looked at all the recipes in these books and of all the salsa ones and we realized that there are some common denominators in these salsas. So what we've done is we've created a new salsa for us based on all of these we're going to use today because we picked tomatoes yesterday. This is our yesterday's picking. And we're going to go through them. We're going to get the reddest ones out. And those are the ones we're going to use to make the video with today. And this is going to be the second video. You're going to see the first video first, how we made the salsa that we made yesterday that had too much vinegar in it. We're going to show you today how we've tweaked that recipe and we've actually made another salsa out of it we think will be better for Deep South Homestead. Yesterday when we made the salsa that we made, we used the frozen tomatoes to do it with out of the freezer. Uh, worked great for taking the skins off, but today we're going to be using fresh tomatoes to see here at Deep South Homestead if it makes a difference whether we use uh, fresh ones versus frozen. With the frozen ones, we took off almost two gallons of juice as we were cooking. Um, and then today we're going to take the seeds and the pulp out and we're going to see if we have the same amount of juice that we have to take off today in order to get our salsa thick and chunky like we like it. Today is salsa day. We've got rain going on outside. We went this morning, picked a bunch of blueberries. We come home. The freezer is completely full of tomatoes now. So we've got to do salsa. We have here, this is our bag of frozen tomatoes. Here I'm going to hit the counter. They're froze solid. We take a basket. We've got our water here. It's right at the boiling point. I don't overdo the tomatoes in this because they're kind of large tomatoes anyway. There's Amish paste. I'll put like four big tomatoes in it. And I'll drop them over in there in that hot water. The skin has already busted on. I could roll that up. You can see the skin right here, how it's already coming off. We're going to leave them for just a minute to make sure that it gets completely. See this one here? That's how quickly and how easy the skin comes off of them. We'll take these now out of here. We're going to bring them over here to this pot. We're going to dump them in here. And really it's a simple thing here. You just take your fingers and just pull right off. And while the tomato is frozen, we just turn it around. We cut the top up of it. This is one of the reasons we use the Amish paste is because there's no big old, there's no real big heart in it. It's um. It's a real easy tomato to use. It's mostly meat, very little, um, very little seed. That's what we're looking for for making salsa. We're gonna cut. See how simple it is to just get the skin off of them. Nothing to it. You pick them up. Skin falls right off. Just that simple. Okay guys, our recipe that we're going to be doing today, we're going to be doing a three, uh, we're going to be multiplying it times three, this recipe. So I've already put two cups of onions in over there. It's going to require three cups of onions. 
So what I do is, I, this is a cup. I take it and dump it over in here. And I transfer it over. This gives me our three cups of onions. This uh, particular recipe, like I said, we're, we're multiplying it times three because we want to be able to have a full canner of salsa. And we have six cloves of garlic cut up here into small pieces here. We're going to put them in here in the salsa. And then we've got to have and then here we've got chopped up bell peppers and marconis. We're going to have six cups of chopped up peppers. So I'm going to make sure I get my two cup thing full because these are going to cook down a little bit. Four. Okay guys, this is our sixth cup of peppers here. Now what we're going to do is take our onions, our garlic, and our pepper. And we're going to go ahead and kind of pre-cook this before we actually put it in with our salsa. And I put that into a cold pan. As we've got our bell pepper, our onions, and our garlics heating up here. There's a lot of juice coming out of them, so we're going to let that kind of uh, cook for a while and steam some of, the, some of the liquid out of it. Right beside it, we have some of our tomatoes. They were frozen. We've got them in a pot here beginning to heat up. We're going to start kind of cooking them down a little bit, getting ready to put our salsa together. Okay, guys, we just added one and a half cups of vinegar per mixture that we put in there. We had three mixtures put in, so we added three one and a half cups of vinegar. Now, we use cider vinegar because that's what it called for. Now we're going to add one and a half teaspoons of salt per mixture. All right, the next step is our garlic, onions, and peppers that we pre-cooked. We're going to go ahead and mix them in here with this. After they've been draining, we've got all the juice out of them because we don't want our salsa too liquidy. Because what we done was we took and kind of pre-cooked our tomatoes. We took a lot of the juice out of them. As you saw in a clip, that will uh, ensure us that our salsa is not going to be too liquidy and too runny. Now we're going to take this and we're going to kind of start cutting it into it. And we are going to cook this for approximately... 20 minutes. Okay, we got Wanda here. She's taking over the operation now. She's actually getting the jars out, ladling the hot salsa into the jars. She's going to be leaving about a half inch head space on them. These ladles are just fantastic, these stainless steel ladles, y'all. They are really nice. About right there, right? Oh, yep, we wouldn't rightly know how many pints this was going to make. Is that right? With the head space? Or is yep, too much? head space looks good. Getting her a hot lid and a hot ring out. Tightening them down. Hand tight. Hand tight. Got them going over here in the water bath canner. I'm going to try to get in here where you can actually get a look at those. Wow. Look at the color. Nice. Goes for 30 minutes in the water bath canner. Okay, guys, here we are. We're through canning. We've got eight jars in here. Look over here. We got some left, that means we get a special treat tonight. We get to have some salsa tonight. We've made into something, we don't know yet what it's gonna be, but these are going to be ready to sit down in the water and water bath. We're gonna show you today how we've tweaked that recipe and we've actually made another salsa out of it we think will be better for Deep South Homestead. 
Okay guys, we put our tomatoes here in our boiling water. We're going to roll them around. What we're going to do is wait for the skin to crack and split. We see one right here, just done it. We don't, we don't like to leave them in there too long. You can see the skin has actually split on that one. We move it over. Let's get another in here. I can't let them stay in here too long. It takes about a minute, a no. minute and a half to let the skin split on them. These here seem like they're holding up okay. Once we get over here, we have a, a bowl with ice water in it. We let them set in the ice water to kill the internal temperature of the tomato down so it doesn't continue cooking. Got another one here. The skin's done split on it. And occasionally you will find one that the skin just will not split on. And if you find one like that, don't just leave it in there because what you're doing is actually cooking the tomato. You see the, the bubbles are coming out the top of that tomato like right here. That's, that tomato's not going to split. You're going to have to prick it because what it's starting to do is cook the internal part of the tomato. So you can go ahead and take it out because the skin will slip off of it. Okay, then I bring them over here and I take my knife and the peelings are just, they just come right off of them. If your tomatoes are ripe enough, the skin will come right off. I usually walk around it, peel up on it. And I cut the whole top of the tomato off. And what we like about the Amish paste is see that little green? That's all the green core you end up with there. I just whack them in half. I cut the little green core out of it. And I will flip it over like this. A little piece of peel in there. Let me make sure I get that off of there. We don't like peeling in our salsa. The Amish paste, I will peel the outside of it off. And once I get the outside peeled off, I have a bowl sitting aside. I'll take my fingers. I just run it down through the veins and the Amish paste like that because these are real easy to do that. And what that does is that leaves me a piece of flesh here. It's virtually seed free pulp free. It's basically just pure. It leaves just a solid piece of flesh here. It makes good salsa. It's good and firm. Okay, it's day two of salsa making. We've got our peppers, onions, and garlic that we're cooking. We're going to saute these down and have them partially cooked before we add them to our tomatoes. Okay guys, we've got our tomatoes in the pot here. We've got, uh, I think we end up with 20 cups out of this here. Fresh tomatoes. These are not, these were not frozen, but these are fresh. So this salsa is going to be, like I said a while ago, is going to be with the fresh tomatoes. And here we have our bell peppers and onions already cooked, sitting here waiting. As soon as this tomato is cooked down, we are going to be mixing these together and getting our salsa going. Okay, we just added our vinegar to our uh, 20 cups of tomatoes. We did a one and three quarters of a cup of vinegar. We did our uh, salt. We put one and a half teaspoons of salt per five cups. And the sugar, we're going to add one tablespoon per batch. And we have four batches here. Then we are going to stir that in. Okay guys, we've got our onions and our bell peppers and our garlic already pre-cooked. We're going to mix that in here. We're doing it this way in the colander because what we're doing is allowing the juice from this to drain out of this. That juice that we are saving, we are mixing back in with our tomato juice to kind of create like a V8 drink. This is going to look good. Kind of stir a little bit of it in there and kind of get it all. The amount of garlic that you use in onions and peppers, after doing lots of research, it's basically just based on you and what you want. We kind of like a lot of it. Everything we're putting in this salsa here was raised here at Deep South Homestead, so we're not worried about any of it. It's all 
all good stuff. I'm just going to take this thing and just pour it in there now. You can add hot peppers if you want. Uh, we're not adding hot peppers to ours because we're not actually creating a salsa that we're going to eat with chips. Our salsa will be more used with things like spaghettis and chilies and stuff like that. So we're just creating a common base here so that when we get ready to make something, we can just open a can of salsa, add a few more seasonings to it, and we have got it to, it's good to go. If we want to add heat it up a little bit, we can add a few chilies at that time. But technically speaking, this could still be eat with chips. Okay guys, we've got our uh, salsa here on a simmer. We then we set it up for 20 minutes. We've got 14 more to go, but what you'll notice is you'll see these skimmings coming to the top. We like to try to get that stuff off of there because it makes for a much cleaner salsa. When you do that, and you're going to get a few peppers or a few pieces of tomato every now and then, so don't let that bother you. But we always try to get this stuff off. It just floats right on the very surface. Because this, a lot of times this will make you salsa kind of have a bad look to it. But you also want to take, take time to stir this because Tomatoes with a little bit of sugar and stuff in it will scorch on the bottom if you're not careful. So that's why you don't want to turn this on a high heat. You want to leave it on a low heat, about a medium. And just let it, once it starts simmering, you want to cook it for about 20 minutes. Alright, day two of salsa. We're going to have quite a few jars, looks like. Probably more than yesterday. Looking good. Okay guys, this is what our salsa looks like. It's looking real good. Got some green peppers and some onions and some garlic in there with a good old Amish paste tomatoes. 